morning everybody it's bright and early it's Saturday morning seven o'clock and uh, I'm heading out to a place called <clears throat> Hamilton um, Hamilton Burlington uh, it's down towards Niagara Falls it's where I go uh, where my girlfriend lives <clears throat> so I don't get to go very often these days obviously because of COVID but um, everything's been lifted right now. Restrictions are up. People can travel um, like a couple of hours, right? So uh, it shouldn't be, well, it's a long weekend and the 401 could be quite busy. So uh, I'm probably gonna take the 407, which is a toll highway just north of um, just north of Toronto and so that's probably what I'm gonna do because going through the city is absolutely brutal um, it can be bumper to so yeah so I, I mean I'm just doing a little bit of a vlog I don't know if I'll turn it into a video I might just attach it onto another video or something like that so but yeah we're, we're not planning anything major I'm just going down today and then originally it was supposed to be yesterday but then it got today so um that's okay I'm just gonna have a drink of coffee courtesy of allegra chetty big shout out to allegra she sent this to me from new york city it's a starbucks and it's a limited edition i mean this blinged up bejeweled starbucks cup Oh my gosh, she must have sent it to me two or three years ago and I'm still using it. Nobody dares touch it in my house. <laughs> if anyone says, oh, I'm just gonna grab a, you know, a to-go cup and I go, D don't take my Allegra cup so they know they're well worn. <laughs> I find when these cups go out of the house, they often don't come back. And so because I set my stupid GPS to a uh, different route and because I always I like my GPS back up just in case there's accidents and I have to get off the highway and then I get lost as I say to everybody I get lost in a parking lot <laughs> not quite that bad but I need I need my GPS and I do know north south east and west so as long as I'm going in the right direction I'm good right it's about two hours from here in good traffic in good straight through traffic um, in the past it has taken me five hours to get down here because it is Niagara region and uh, of course we're not going across the border today and that's a whole other subject that I could get into um, just because of COVID we've been spent the last five minutes arguing with my GPS like like she can't hear me she's just chirping at me right she's just chirping away and I go no I don't want to go that way um, you're not taking me up around the country. I want to go from A to B to C to Z. I don't want to go all in around all these little wiggly side roads. Uh, I want to go the highways. And uh, normally it just takes me straight across on the 401, but I am not taking the 401 today. So I'm going to go up onto the 407, the toll road. But my GPS has decided that I don't think you want to go there. You want to go the way I want to go, and I'm going. Six See, she's doing hours. it again. Then what the hell? No. Right. No. no, 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 no. I'm driving to the 115, and then I'm going up that one. That's all I have to say about that. Or the 118, or whatever the hell the, the road is I'm going up to get to the 407. <laughs> So, um, no, I'm just joking around with you guys. Uh, you know, when you have nobody else to talk to in the car, <coughs> you either talk to your GPS, or as a YouTuber, you get on your camera, on your phone, and by the way, I have a brand new phone car jack thing for my phone. It's fabulous. I got it from Amazon. I will link it down below. It's a really good, substantial one. I've been buying these cheap ones for like, you know, on eBay and places like that. I got this on Amazon and I've been buying cheap ones for like six and seven dollars. 
this one was I think $20 with taxes and it looks really good and you can put it on the dash you can put it on the, the glass whatever you want to do right so um, but yeah so I I, um, I thought oh what the heck I'm just gonna, gonna get on here and just ramble about you know ramble um, and you know chat to you guys even though you can't talk back but um, but at least you know I feel like I'm talking to someone <laughs> Wouldn't it be a hoot if I went live? <laughs> that would that would be too distracting because people would be messaging me and I wouldn't be able to answer back and that would not be good. We don't want me to have an accident. Whereas this here, I mean, I just keep my eyes on the road and um, I just talk. And you know, talking is something I do well and always have. So maybe I don't do it well, but I do it. <laughs> when my family get together, I have, um, I'm the baby. A lot of you will know that already. I'm the baby. Point one kilometers. Take exit four forty on right. I Take route seventeen. Then turn right. No, no GPS. No, just settle down. Just calm down. So, so anyway, what was I saying before I was rudely interrupted by that female on my GPS? I thought by putting a female on it, it she wouldn't be as unreasonable as a man. <laughs> but anyhow. Let me get back to my story. My story, um, family of uh, four girls, five originally, but my twin died at birth. So for people who have seen that story, I do have a story back when. Um, if I think about it, I will link. I will link. Um, I will link it down below. <clears throat> but um, so I'm the youngest um, of four girls and my father passed away when i was like eight or something and she's still at it she's still persistent so um but i don't know where these side roads take me and they could take me up around too much country you know so i'm not doing that but before um I, she keeps putting me off my game here you know um, but I wanted to say while I think about it, my husband took the car out yesterday, filled it up with gas, checked all the levels, oils, and, and all of that stuff, right? All that shit, right? And um, checked the tires and, um, you know, cleaned off the windows and washed the car and did all of that stuff. He does always does that for me. This is his way of showing how he cares, you know, like men have a, have a, a, a different way of showing affection than women do and his way of showing affection ha, has always been to take care of important things like the car and if I'm going anywhere <clears throat> he'll say okay you know just text me when you get there like that's all like I don't have to check in with him or do any of that So we're heading north now to the 407, which is where I want to go. And she kept arguing with me the whole time. So, yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I come from a family of uh, all women. Um, my mom was stay-at-home mom. And uh, I have three other sisters and myself. And... Uh, the, uh, two of my oldest sisters pretty much raised me because my mom um, oh we've got a, a light over my face now yeah my mom was I believe my mom was like in her 40s when she had me so uh, and then she carried twins and she was extremely ill the whole time I'm, I don't know even know if you want to hear the story but I'm just gonna ramble while I drive it just gives me something to do so um, yeah and then the other baby um, another girl I guess my mom could only carry girls like yeah and I think she she might have lost a, a, a baby during in between all of that but yeah she had five babies and uh, all all five were girls and man my grandmother lived with us as well <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> we did have a four bedroom house but there was only one bathroom because it was 7.5 kilometers on 115 and um, <clears throat> yeah, it was um, it was interesting house having one bathroom, you know. But we managed, you know. Honestly, we really did. We we did really well. Um, 
you know, mapping out times. And then we were all different ages because my two older sisters, uh, Dorothy, she is four years older than me. And then um, my oldest two sisters are 15 and 16 years older than me. So um, one of them, they, one of my sisters, May, she, um, she had me a lot. She took care of me a lot because her fiance, Johnny, who I immediately latched onto as, as a dad, and then he raised me because um, my mom couldn't cope. So that's, you know, that's, that's kind of what happened. But I had a, you know, a great childhood as far as, you know, um, we, we didn't have a lot of money or anything. In fact, we had, didn't have any money. We had enough money to live. And, uh, but my mom didn't buy, always buy us new clothes and that was fine. We didn't know any different, you know. Um, some of my friends had more than I did, but, you know, it was never an issue and we were never jealous of anyone. Um, my mom always said, be proud of what you've got, and, you know, um, she was a very proud woman. So, uh, yeah, so there, there were, um, my, that's my grandmother, my mother, uh, my three sisters and myself, and, uh, you know, we all lived together, and it was quite a hairy house, um, hormones flying, well, female hormones flying, but as I say, my dad died really young of heart attack. I think he was 50, 51, 52, uh, and I was just little, like I was just, I think I was eight. I mean, I remember him well. Um, I just didn't know him well, because he was away all the time. He was out um, on long hauls on these big trawler ships. Uh, and he was, um, back then in those, those days, you filled the, he was down in the stoker room, and that was, where you filled the, the, the coal to fire the engines. And we kind of think that's maybe why he died so young because uh, you hear of people who, um, you know, who are in coal mines and, and you know, they get the, the black lung. Um, and I think it might've put a pressure on his heart and, and he died young. So um, yeah, my mom lived on until she was, she wasn't very old. She was 76 when she died. She had a stroke and then didn't really, then lived for a couple of years more and didn't really survive. Didn't really, you know, do well after that. So, um, but yeah, uh, by the time I was 16 years old, I'd met my future husband. So I was just out of school and into a um, hairdressing um, uh, what is it they call it? Uh, apprenticeship. So, um, so I was doing that. My mom, my, my other sister was a hairstylist and I had worked from, I was 12 in her salon and she had a very successful salon, um, where they did, uh, model hairstyles. Two kilometers, take ramp on right to rear route four. So, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, so, but anyhow, um, take a break for now and then concentrate more on the road because I'm going into territory that I'm not familiar with and I uh, just want to get some more coffee into me and, um, and I'll be back in a little while. Okay, see you soon. Take ramp on right. Didn't listen to my GPS. I don't listen to anybody. <laughs> if I want to do something, I'm going to do it my way, right? <laughs> but not always, because I put people before me all the time. So when I decide to do something myself, then watch out. There's no stopping me. <laughs> it's like tunnel vision. So I'm on the 407, which is an absolutely amazing pleasure of a road to drive on. There are currently two cars on the road. One is driving beside me, and um, there's two on the other side going um, east, and I'm going west towards Niagara. And this uh, toll road takes you all the way to the QEW. I'm sure all these highways are not really 
anything you know about but anyway if you've been to Toronto you probably know the 401 um, but the 401 is a very congested road now it's very stressful to drive on I mean I do it and I've been doing it for like 40 50 years since I've been driving um, longer than 40 years oh my gosh my son's 40 so yeah so a long time but when they built this 407 I said oh it's so nice and I mean you do have to pay for it and it's not cheap um, to go from the full extent of it it's about on the weekends it's cheaper it's cheaper on the weekends weekdays it's probably about 50 bucks one way uh, weekdays it's around 35 so it's well worth it really like you know if you're doing that once or twice a year and you blow a hundred dollars on a highway like who cares you know you're getting to your destination much quicker it's a more pleasurable drive you know uh, you're not starting and stopping you just you know you're on this magnificent beautiful highway with lots of views because it is north so there's lots of you know country around it it's 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 beautiful So I'll just ride this baby out until QEW and then I'll head down to Hamilton and Burlington. <coughs> and then we'll see what... Please Oops. drive to highlighted route. We'll see. Yeah, we know. We know where we're going now. We're on the highway. Give yourself a break, GPS. Just relax. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's nice. Um, what are we going to do this weekend? We haven't decided. We'll probably go out for dinner. Uh, I'm going to go visit Ruth Lynn's mom and dad. So that's where I'm heading first. And I always have to visit the folks because I adore them. They are just, they're my people and, you know, they're my family. Um, and funny story. I should tell you the story of how I met Ruth Lynn. I met Ruth Lynn about 10 years ago. So we haven't been... You know we haven't been together since we were young like and she's younger than I am she's uh, I think she's turning 50 and I'm turning uh, 67 so there's quite an age gap but I met her when I was with another friend in Cuba of all places to meet a Canadian well it's easy to meet a Canadian in Cuba because it's full of Canadians um, typically uh, Americans don't go to Cuba uh, and that's all political and that's not something I'm about to get into um, so we never really meet any Americans down there excuse me because they can't fly directly so <clears throat> but you will get a lot of European people in Cuba Cuba's beautiful oh it's just, oh the people oh it's just magnificent if you ever get a chance to go it's just gorgeous and we were staying in a in a really nice little resort with little cottages and we each had a little cottage in our own porch and you had um you didn't have a kitchen or anything but you had a fridge and you know um you could um, um you know have snacks and things like that right so um so what was i saying um so yeah, I was down there with another friend and of course, you know, me being me, I talk to everybody, right? So um, it's, you know, um, that's who I am. So I met these incredible people down there and one of them was Ruth Lynn and she was celebrating her 40th birthday. So I would have been in... Um, I'd have been what 50 50 something maybe around 55 at that time so I think we're about 15 years apart in age so um, and she was turning 40 and she was with her girlfriend so um, so you know me I went over and I said hey how are ya you know and uh, you know and she says oh hi you know where are you from and I go I'm I'm from you know east of Toronto told her where I was from and she says oh no way I'm from you know uh, Burlington Hamilton area down near Niagara Falls and I go well that's not too far you know that's a couple hours so little did I know that we would end up being best friends 
and so I came you know when we came back and we made other friends there as well and they were Canadians and we still keep in touch with them go visit them when, when I'm down they live near I think they live down near St. Catharines uh, which is out near um, Niagara on the lake so anyway we um, we just kind of we all clicked we just all clicked came back blew up our phones for the first three weeks after we came back like we had this girl crush on each other we were just like just best buddies right and um, just couldn't get enough of each other and we were just texting every day and you know our phones our texts at those that point you had so many texts and we ran out of text so we had to upgrade our phones <laughs> our plans so then three weeks after we got back we planned to meet in Toronto uh, for a meet up and lunch and a chit chat so we did that that was our first visit and then the second visit was me going down there um, and meet her folks and her brother and her two her niece and nephew she's not married and so we did that and uh, and then she came and visited and came to visit and meet my family and my family were absolutely in love with her um, like my two boys uh, Richard adores her uh, Stephen too Ashley Kelsey they all they all treated her like family because they knew how much I loved her so uh, so yeah so that's the story of how uh, Ruth Lynn and I uh, became friends and uh, you know I always say I, I believe in fate like I do I believe I believe in fate I believe in karma uh, I believe in destiny and I believe that what you put out into the world not always but what you put out into the world come back, comes back to you tenfold and it's always been that way for me I also uh, I'm very um, I'm spiritual uh, in a different way of that don't want to get into religion no let's not go down that road I am spiritual to the way that um, being good and doing good for others is is my religion and that's all I'll say about that so but um, yeah I won't make this too long and it's gonna be long but I'll chop some bits out of it so I'm gonna go and then um, I'll maybe do a little bit of vlogging once I get there and uh, if Ruth Lynn feels okay about it then we'll maybe have a little chat with her on on the next part. Okay, so uh, so hang tight and uh, I'll so guys, I'm just showing you that I wasn't kidding when I said I was the only one on the road. Drive 6.9 kilometers, then keep left on 407. This is the 407 as mouthpiece has interrupted again and told us so uh, and there is no traffic if I were to go down to the 401 right now it is congested so badly that it's like bumper to bumper going through between Young Street and through Mississauga like you know and beyond this is luxury in my opinion this is something i rarely rarely ever see here in in uh, the metropolis of toronto it's beautiful look at it i mean look it's you know it's is this worth 40 dollars yes in my opinion this is worth spending 40 dollars for peace of mind and just relaxing on the highway i see one two three cars one two three cars ahead of me but so far from when I left uh, there was just a white car and myself and that white car that's that white car just up ahead you can see it so yeah I just thought I'd flip the camera around and let you have a look so um, super nice yep um, so I would imagine I'd probably be there before the two hours if this is the case. Um, I'm driving at 120 kilometers, which is, I don't know, it doesn't convert it for me. I don't know what that is, 100, 
20 kilometers, 70 miles an hour or something like that. So, um, 60 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, I think. Yeah. So there you go. Alrighty. That's, that's it. And then you can see the eastbound <clears throat> on the other side. And they're coming east. They're heading east out towards Montreal, um, east of Toronto, uh, Belleville, uh, 